Greetings from Wichita, Kansas, USA, where it's 10 degrees Fahrenheit today. I think that's minus 10 Celsius about. I have the heater on in the workshop here. You can probably hear it in the background. I do apologize for that background noise. In the previous video, we discussed the installation of the X-Plane Direct interface. In this video, we'll take a quick look at a sample sketch to make sure the installation is up and running and to give you a basic overview of how X-Plane Direct sketch works for the Arduino. It's traditional in the programming world that your first program be one that displays the text Hello World. In the X-Plane Direct world, my equivalent of that is to have a sketch that displays the status of the beacon light on the built-in LED that most Arduino devices have. This sketch is called XPL Direct Demo. It's available on my Patreon page in the same place that you download the X-Plane Direct plugin and Arduino library. I have the sketch loaded here in the Arduino IDE. I have an equivalent Arduino Mega 2560 plugged in. I've selected the board Mega 2560. And you can see it on COM12 here of my computer. The basic overview of a sketch for the X-Plane interface. We need to include the X-Plane Direct library, which I've done here. We need to create an instance of the X-Plane Direct interface. That's what this line does. When we create it, we also have to send it a pointer to the serial device you're using to connect to the computer. In most cases, this is just the normal serial port that we use for everything else. The intention of this sketch is to monitor the status of the beacon light on the X-Plane plane that you're flying. You will need to define a variable to hold the status of the, of the light. In this case, I'm following the beacon light. X-Plane itself talks in long integers. Anything that's an integer is transmitted as long integers. We'll follow that standard as that's what's transmitted to us from X-Plane. In the setup portion of your sketch, the first thing I do is turn the LED built in, which is usually on digital port 13, and I set it for output so we can turn the light on and off. We have to start the serial port and tell it what the baud rate is. I've defined XPL Direct underscore baud rate to match the baud rate of my plug-in. This equates to a 115,200 baud. Don't try to use anything else the plug-in is expecting that baud rate. Next we'll run begin on the interface. We send it a string that identifies this particular device. You can come up with whatever name you want. This uniquely identifies your device on the plugin and also in the debug information that's created. After that, we start registering the data refs and commands that we want. In this case, I'm only registering one data ref. You can find these on the web page for the X-Plane developer. It's developer.xplane.com slash data refs. You can scroll through and find the ones you want to work with. They say they publish over 4,000 of these, so it might take you a little time to find what you're looking for. In this case, I found that the SIM Cockpit 2 switches tab has what I'm looking for for the beacon light. Here's the beacon on. It says that it's returned as an integer, but remember those all mean long integers. This has been available since X-Plane version 9. It is writable. It's considered a boolean, which means that it's either it's either 1 or 0. You can see I have that the whole name for the beacon right here. The next parameter here is if we want to be able to read from it, write to it, or both. This will be explained in the next video. The next parameter is the minimum time in milliseconds between updates. The purpose of this is to slow down the transfer of data if you have a data ref that you don't need to access quite that often. This is just a switch that turns on when you turn it on and off when you turn it off, so we shouldn't get too much data flow anyway. A zero is a divider that reduces the resolution of the data that we're receiving. 
In this case, it won't make any difference, so we'll leave it at zero. The last parameter in this case is a pointer to the variable that we defined to hold the status of the beacon. Here we're setting the status of the LED to off so that we can start working with it. In the loop section of your sketch, you always need to run xloop. xloop both watches the serial port for incoming data and also transmits data to the plugin if it changes on our side. After that, you can write your code. In this case, if the beacon is true, which means it's not zero, we're going to write to the LED and make it on so that it's on. If it's not true, then we just turn it back off. And that's all there is to this sketch, really. Let's compile it and upload it to the board. All right, it says it's done uploading. That means it was successfully sent. One thing you can do to make sure that it's working, you can go to your serial monitor. Make sure it's set at one, 115, 200 baud. Type that. That's the less than sign, the lowercase a, right? And then the greater than sign. The Arduino device will see that and then return the name. It also sends a zero right before it saying that that's, it's transmitting the name. If you do use the serial monitor, make sure it's closed before you launch X-Plane. Otherwise the port will be tied up and X-Plane won't be able to see your device. So I'm going to close this window. Now we launch X-Plane. Once X-Plane is loaded, it should have searched the serial ports to look for X-Plane Direct Arduino devices. We can go to the Plugins, X-Plane Direct, Status. You can see the build number of the plugin, how many devices it found, in this case just the one, with one registered data refs, no registered commands. It keeps track of how many packets have been sent and received and some other information there for you. You can see it, device zero that it found is the X-Plane demo. We should be able to go down now to the beacon, turn it off and on. You can see that the light on the, you can see that the LED on the Mega is uh, responding appropriately. If we want to work on our program, we can go to plugins X plane direct, disengage devices. When we go to the status now, you can see that there's zero devices detected and it's released the serial port so we can we can work on the programming if we like. So we can go back to the Arduino IDE. Let's say we want to track the nav lights instead of beacon lights. We'll go to we'll take this. Put it here. Recompile. Okay, you can see it's done uploading. We should be good to go. We we'll go back to the plugin. Re-engage devices. can see now it's found that device. Nothing really has changed except now the beacon light has no effect but the nav light is now being tracked. Every time the X-Plane Direct plugin runs, it creates an XPL Direct error log. It exists in the X in the root directory of your X-Plane installation, wherever that is. We can open this and take a look at it. 
that lets you know all of the devices that it found and what data refs were requested and some information about those data refs. You can see here that the plugin is asking our device, the X-Plane demo, which, re which data refs it would like to register. It got back that it wants to register this one, the SIM Cockpit 2 switches navigation lights. It says, okay, it found that. It also tells us that it's of a type int, in case we didn't know that. And then it looks for more, and then the device said, nope, that's all, that's all there is. And then it puts some other information, that's it. You can reference this file for having trouble registering particular data refs or commands. That's all I have for this video. In the next video, we'll discuss more about registering data refs and the different ways to do that. I hope to see you there.